Broadcasting from Studio 202 at the Springit Technology Center in Navasota, Texas, it's NOV Live. Now, let's start the show. Hello and welcome to NOV Live. I'm your host, Shelby Dumaine, and we have a really exciting topic today. We're going to get a, a virtual tour of the MySCE app. Um, and we have a really excellent guest. We have Danny Salinas. He's the account manager for Wellsite Services on today. And if this is your first time tuning into the show, welcome. Uh, this is a show where we talk to experts from inside NOV. We hear about maybe an, an area or a technology that they're really focused on, and we bring that knowledge um, out to you, our audience. And we are live right now. So if you're watching this, welcome. Uh, we're here in Navasota, Texas, and uh, we, we welcome anybody watching all over the world, wherever you are, whether it's morning or afternoon or evening, maybe even the middle of the night. Uh, thank you for tuning into the show today. If you have a question at any point for the expert that we have on the show today, feel free to put your questions in the comment section below. Um, again, whether you're watching on Facebook, LinkedIn, or uh, I'm sorry, Twitter or YouTube, uh, feel free to leave your comments and we will get to as many comments when we do a Q&A section at the end of the show. All right, with that, all the housekeeping out of the way, uh, before we introduce Danny onto the show, we actually have a question for you. It's time for Rig Geek Post of the Week. Rig Geek's Post of the Week. Screen as well, so get your fingers ready to type on your keyboard if you think you know the answer. Uh, our our question for this week is: uh, Louis Brandt designed the first triple deck shaker when he was with what company before starting the Brandt Company? And Brandt is, hmm? oh, Louis. What did I say, <laughs> Louis? Um, <laughs> what company was he with uh, before uh, starting the Brandt Company? All right, so if you think you know the answer, go ahead and comment your questions uh, or your answers below, and we will reveal that uh, answer at the end of the episode. All right, without further ado, I would like to introduce Danny Salinas. Danny, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. As When I started 10 years ago with NOV working our equipment in South Texas on a rig, I never thought in a million years I'd be here, so here I am. Absolutely welcome. And, and on that note, can you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and, and what you do here at NOV? Yeah. So I started uh, working our equipment in South Texas, like I said, and I kind of worked my way up through the ranks. I did technical sales and support. So I was responsible for all the customer facing presentations, all of our reporting. I ran some of our labs in Corpus and in Odessa. Um, and then I got into sales about three or four years ago mm -hmm. and have been doing city sales calling on major operators and trying to lease our equipment. Excellent. And I know if, if any of our audience is on LinkedIn or on socials, often they might might see your face there. So we might talk a little bit about that later. Um, hopefully they'll recognize you as, as the excellent expert that you are. If not me, at least the shirts. <laughs> yeah, at least the shirts. That's right. Yeah. Um, well, to start off, today we're talking about the MySCE app. So just at, at the kind of base level, can you talk a little bit about what Solids Control is? So solids control is kind of one of those things that is a necessity, but no one really knows what it does or how it provides value. So that's kind of why we came up with this app. We worked with Mike Morgenthaler and his company Cutpoint. Um, so solids control, very basic. Um, basically, you're drilling a hole in the ground for oil or gas. Just like if you were drilling a hole in a, in a piece of wood, you're going to have material that's, that's taken out of the hole, and you have to get rid of that somehow. So when they drill, they use a drilling fluid or a drilling mud. And so that mud has four or five, actually there's probably like 10, uh, but we'll go into four different mm -hmm. things that it helps do. So the main deal is for cooling and lubricating the drill string and the drill bit, because there's a lot of friction as you're drilling through the earth's surface. Right. Um, the second one is to create a hydrostatic pressure to make sure that the well doesn't fall in on you, cave in. Um, third, you would have um, getting those cuttings, we call them cuttings, getting those out of the hole. You don't want them piling up at the bottom because then you're just making the drill bit have to work harder. So you pump down. It's like if you're blowing in your chocolate milk, that's going to come back up <laughs> right. to the top. So that's the third. And the fourth is if any time you have to interrupt your drilling process, um, the mud has a capability of suspending the solids, again, so they don't mm -hmm. fall down to the bottom and get in the way. So what solids control does is we control the solids. Those cuttings that come back out of the hole we have a myriad of different equipment suites that can filter out 
those solids from the mud. So you start with the drilling shakers, the shell shakers, that gets out really big particles. You can go next to hydrocyclones, desilter, desanders, and that gets out a little smaller, and then you just kind of go down the line. Centrifuges being kind of the last line of defense for mechanical separation. Mm -hmm. You can use chemical to kind of break the emulsions and break the chemical compounds in the mud, but mechanically wise, the, the centrifuge is kind of the end all be all. And then, so that's solids control. Then the second part of our business is waste management. So once you get the cuttings out of the mud, you've got to do something with them. So you've got mm -hmm. to either take them to disposal, some places still allow for on-site remediation. So um, we try to extract as much fluid as we can from the cuttings mm -hmm. and return that back to the uh, mud pits. Mm -hmm. So then you're recycling the fluid right. and you're reducing haul off. So we're, we're kind of a green operation if you really think about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. And I was going to say, if there was a, a fifth function of drilling mud, would it be to stain every article of clothing yes. that comes on? Because I don't think I've gotten on a rig one time without yeah. getting some mud somewhere else. To adhere the smell of, of oil-based <laughs> yeah. mud to everything you own. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's, that's it, for sure. <laughs> that's great. Well, so what um, how, what does the solids control, waste management, all of that have to do with the, the SC, My SEC app? Or what is the function of the My SCE, My SCE app? So the app started out as an internal sales tool. Mm. It was for us to go to the customer and uh, explain how we are saving them money or how we provide value. That's, that's how it started out. And then once we started getting into it further, we saw that it actually benefits the customer as well. They can drill their well on paper. Um, so on the screen, you'll see the, the home screen of the app, mm -hmm. just a screenshot. And it's available on Apple and Android. It's free. Um, something that, that you can get and just kind of mess around with. Right. Um, so if you go to the next slide, we can see you'll enter in all your well geometry. Um, so bit size, depth of the interval, mm -hmm. uh, washout, anything that you would have with your, with your mud program or your drilling program. Um, and then on the next slide, you'll see that you are able to put in mud to cuttings ratio, solids removal efficiency, um, Low gravity solids targets. So low gravity solids are kind of the bad ones you want to get out. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, you'll put in your cost per barrel and then also how you're disposing of the cuttings if you're using haul offs and what that unit of measure is. And then if you go to the next one, we can see that um, it'll actually calculate hole volume. So whenever you're mm -hmm. drilling a hole, let's say it's a 12 and a quarter inch hole and you drilled 1,000 feet, there's a certain amount of rock that comes out. So you got to know that number. And then... Um, It'll tell you how many solids will be removed from that. It'll also tell you your uh, dilution, whether you're in water-based mud, oil-based mud, synthetic base. You have a base fluid that you have to use to build that system. Um, so on the next one, you'll see that it'll show uh, kind of that base fluid ratio, what your waste will be, which is really good in planning a well. So you can kind of know when you're planning an AFE and you want to know what your uh, costs are going to be on the front end and the back end, this helps you kind of dial that in. So then you'll mm -hmm. see your total interval costs, so that's for mud and solids control. Um, and then at the bottom of that one, you'll see there's different sliders. Uh, there's one for solids removal efficiency, there's one for low gravity solids tolerance, and then there's one for mud to cuttings ratio, which is basically mm -hmm. the mud that, or the cuttings ratio to the mud that's being drilled with. If you mess with those, so typically we'll start with 80% on solids removal efficiency, and then you can toggle so this one now we're at 85% and you can see that the interval cost has gone down significantly. Mm -hmm. And then whenever we go to 90%, you'll see that the, uh, the cost has gone down even more. So that's one way to tell if you're using more efficient solids control, you're able to cut down on your mud costs, your disposal bill, mm -hmm. it, it all adds up and it's, it's significant money. Right. Absolutely. I think that's something anytime I can kind of use a tool like this, like, if I'm looking to buy a car and they have a cost calculator where I yeah. can see like what my payments might be or what the fuel mileage is going to be, I, comparing all of those things, that I know helps me greatly when I'm kind of looking looking for different stuff like that. So that's really awesome, especially that it started off as an internal tool. And at some point, I don't know if, who it was, if it was you or who, but someone said, you know, this is pretty handy. Why don't we you know, make this public, make this a tool for everybody? Yeah, no, I think that might have been Mike Morgenthaler when we were working mm -hmm. with him. So he, he runs a company called Cutpoint, which is – the go-to. I mean, every operator has him on speed dial, and if anything's going wrong with their solids control, they call him out, and he evaluates it. Mm -hmm. And so he's been doing this for a long time, and we kind of partner with him. He does a lot of our training, mm -hmm. and um, so we we sat down and said, "Hey, look, we need something to prove 
that what we're doing saves money. We can show it on the back end, but on the front end, when you're trying to sell someone something, it's kind of it's a little harder. So to have this visual, right. um, he does he uses it a lot in the field still. Um, and what he likes to do to prove that it works is he'll ask what their parameters were from the last well. Hmm. So what did you use? How much did you spend on diesel or whatever your dilution fluid was? And he'll put in that solid removal efficiency, and he can pretty much get it right on to what they were spending. Right. So it's kind of a cool mm -hmm. backwards functionality too to prove yeah. it. Absolutely. And I think you mentioned in your uh, the video you, that we used to kind of tell people about what the show is going to be about today. It's almost like, what did you say, building a well before actually having to build the well? Yeah, is that what you yeah it's like yeah. Drill, drilling well on paper is kind of what some people use. We'll do like a spud meeting before we do the mm -hmm. well. And so this is kind of even before that. Like you can do it on the app and figure out what all your costs are going to be. And it gives right. you a better idea of, of how much you're spending. Mm -hmm. That's really excellent. Are there any other features that this this has i think we have i know so we were we you kind of brought those uh the pictures to show sort of a virtual tour of the app are there right. any other features you could show yeah us? so there, there's a couple different calculators on there there's mm -hmm. one i think the first one is uh screen so cuttings handling so whenever mm -hmm. you're um you're joining the well like i said you have to get rid of the cutting somehow whether it be right. a waste haul off or whatever and that's a really big cost on a lot of these wells no matter where you're drilling if it's permian haynesville bakken marcellus um, trucking is really expensive right now just because mm -hmm. of trucking driver, right. truck driver shortage and then diesel costs and all that stuff's going up. So this helps you kind of pinpoint how many trucks you're going to have. If you go to the next slide, um, it'll tell you how many trucks you're going to have and also tell you what your handling rate is um, per hour and in, in yards or barrels or loads, whatever you're looking at. That helps us internally. Uh, the second kind of benefit of this calculator is certain mm -hmm. equipment is only um only has a capacity for certain cuttings volume so the faster that that these contractors are drilling um there's more and more uh cuttings coming over mm -hmm. so it's imperative that we can handle it and bid the right package like i'm not going to bid a shaker that can only handle 500 gallons a minute whenever they're drilling a thousand gallons a minute so so this helps us internally kind of tell which package is the right one that they need to use. And then for the operator, it helps to know their costs ahead of time. Right. And I imagine that also helps with transparency. So showing this is the tool we're using as well. So we both, they have the ability to, to use yeah. these calculations and see that way they know that we're giving them it, pr precisely what they need, right. not, you know, not over or not less that, that they're getting. Yeah. Ideally we works. go in there and we sit down with the app in front of them mm -hmm. and go through it or if they want to download it themselves and it, it's like you said transparency they can kind of check well let me see if he's bidding me the right, <laughs> right thing exactly he's not just trying to get a bunch of money out of us for no reason but mm -hmm. yeah it, it helps with both sides yeah, uh, like so that. the next one mm -hmm. is a screen cost estimator so on the mm -hmm. shakers that i mentioned earlier they have screens on them and it's a it's a wearable i mean not a wearable i guess it's a commodity you've got to change these out once they get holes in them or they they are past their lifetime right um what a lot of competitors do or a lot of screen manufacturers do is they tout per panel price. Mm -hmm. Hey, my, my screen's only $200 a panel and maybe a NOV's OEM screen is more than that. And so some operators tend to go, Oh, that one's cheaper. I'm gonna go with that. Right. It's not a really telltale of what, um, the actual cost is. If they use that mm -hmm. screen, it maybe it's only $200 a panel, but maybe they have to use 200 in a well. Whereas if they use OEM at a higher cost per panel and we only use 50 a well, like the, the costs kind of mm -hmm. don't, don't add up. So this is kind of a more objective um, way to show that we do cost per foot. Mm. So then you doesn't matter how, how long your well is. It doesn't right. uh, matter how much the panel is. It tells you, okay, this is the real cost. So if, if you can dial that in and then maybe theirs is one, $2 a foot and ours is maybe 50 cents a foot, then you can kind of see that it, it pays more in the long run to pay for maybe the, the more premium screen. Right, exactly. And so with this app, so I know you mentioned it's on the app store, someone could technically go in now and, and start plugging in and playing numbers. Yeah. But if they wanted to kind of, like you said, sit down and have that conversation, um, how would they, would they reach out to you or? So they can reach out to me. Mm -hmm. uh, there's four or five of us in Houston. Um, then we're mm -hmm. scattered all over. We've got two in Permian, uh, two in Louisiana. We've got mm -hmm. one in, Pennsylvania, one in Denver. So there's any, any NOV solids control person can help you with this. They've all been trained in it. They all use it probably daily. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you just want to reach out to any of your NOV representatives.
That's excellent. Thank you yeah. for, for kind of showing us, walking us through, giving us a, a virtual tour of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, and I wanted to, we actually do have some audience questions, so I wanted to make sure, sure to give them some time and include that. So I also wanted to mention, thank you so much for those who have submitted questions. If you have any, uh, if, you're, if you're watching this and you haven't typed one in yet, feel free to go ahead and comment your questions, and we'll try to get to as many as we can uh, in our time here. But this first question comes from LinkedIn. Uh, they asked, what is NOV doing to check the ESG box in solid control? Uh, they mentioned with equipment efficiencies, fuel efficiencies, cleanouts, et cetera. Now you mentioned there's kind of that recyclability element. To yeah, this. so that's something that, that is recent for us. Um, like I mentioned, that kind of what we do by essence is uh, sustainability management. We, we are trying to reduce the amount of, of um, carbon right. that is being left or, in landfills or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've tasked a team to sit down and they actually can pinpoint the, uh, the footprint that our equipment uh, has and also mitigates. Mm -hmm. So if you're using the waste management part of it, we have something called Advanced Fluid Recovery System, the AFRS. I think you've had people on here mm -hmm. talk yes, about I it. So. Mm -hmm. um, so that one is very efficient at recovering oil from the cuttings and mm -hmm. returning it to the operator. So what you are left with to go to disposal is very, very small percentage of oil. So mm -hmm. then you've got that side of it. The other side of it is that you're reducing the amount of trucks that are on the road to haul that to disposal. And then the third part is diesel usage. So if we're returning all this fluid back to the operators, they have to use less diesel, which is, mm -hmm. is better all around. Absolutely. So we do have a hard number for that specific piece of equipment that I can say, I don't have it off the top of my head, but if you want right. to reach out to me, <laughs> I, can, uh, I can give it to you mm -hmm. and, and show that it's, this many units of carbon removed using the mm -hmm. system, something like that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, that's something I think that's pretty cool with a lot of the technology um, in NOV, but especially ones that we highlight on the show is that there is often that element of the ESG kind of two different technologies. Mm -hmm. It all just is different on how, you know, what is that, what is it that we're working on to, to make the process cleaner or better or more efficient? Right. Uh, so it's really cool to hear those little nuances of how all the different elements kind of work together to do that. Yeah. And um, kind of on that element, on that topic of technology, we actually got another question uh, from online. Uh, they asked, "What uh, is there any other new technology that you can talk about in the pipeline for solids control that you're allowed to?" I always preface yeah, so whenever we get those questions. I'm yeah. like, you know, I, I warn the audience. We have, yeah, you know, our engineering <laughs> and, tech, and, and uh, technical group has, has kind of hushed me on a lot of those. Like, hey, sales guys, don't run off with this. Like, we're not ready yet. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there are a few that I can talk about. So mm -hmm. one that's that we've already launched, and I think we're in phase two now, is um, centrifuge monitoring. Mm -hmm. So through our MD Totco and our Max platform, we are able to monitor the centrifuge. Mm -hmm. So right now we're in the kind of the testing phase, so we can do parameters mm -hmm. and uh, kind of see that it's on, what it's running, what speeds it's running at, and then we have vibration sensors. It's more internal. It helps us kind of see what's going on. Right. And we've done a, a few case studies where we've already caught certain things that could have mm -hmm. led to maybe a failure or the centrifuge packing off and we were able to catch that beforehand. The second part of that is um, where we will have uh, the ability to kind of monitor the fluid going in and out. So uh, mud weights, density or density, solids percentage, stuff like that, that is kind of key. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have recipes in the centrifuge where you can type in, like let's say you wanna run um, a nine pound mud and you want the mud to be nine pound, it's 10 pound going in. So the centrifuge can actually ramp up and down its parameters, the bowl speed, the, the feed, torque, mm -hmm. stuff like that, and achieve what you want it to achieve. So it's kind of some, some AI in there, some algorithms that we're using to kind of ramp up and down. And then we're mm -hmm. applying the same type technology to our shakers. So we're doing a couple different shaker monitoring um, things that are in the pipeline. Right. And so that's phase two. I think there's three, four, and five over the next year, so it's it's really cool. It's exciting. There's the <laughs> solid control is kind of yeah. those things. It's been around for a long time and hasn't really evolved. I mean, a shaker just shakes. Like it's right. it's 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 <laughs> not. There's not very much to it. But so it's cool to see that we're actually investing money and in doing a lot of of this stuff at the forefront. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I think that's something interesting. So we've mentioned it before that uh, we broadcast this show out of our our uh, Spring It Technology Center here in Navasota, Texas, and we have a test rig on the facility, and so we often. Um, I, I help give tours. A lot of the guests on the show end up going on a tour after and whatnot. And, and you know, being someone who, I guess, you know, relatively new to the oil and gas industry and 
you know, I didn't major in, uh, in anything in the energy space. So going into it, I would have thought the big shiny thing that everyone would see is, is you know, the, the pipe going down in the well and all that stuff. But I'm always, or I won't say I was surprised, but on a lot of the tours, the stuff people point out is like, oh, the brand, they, they want to look at the, the shakers from the rig, and they're talking a lot about that. So I know uh, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in that space that I was always like, I don't know, what is that thing over there? So yeah. doing the show, I've started to learn a little bit more about, about solids control and, and how critical it is to operations and how much yeah, it Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's forgotten about a lot because it's in the <laughs> back of the rig. We're just kind of the backyard guys. That are, yeah, I know they do something and, and just as long as they don't spill anything on the ground. It's right. kind of like one of those things. <laughs> But yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff that goes into it, and that's that's one thing that I've I've learned over the years. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and we actually got another question on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, they asked, uh, "Is the My SCE app more of an accounting tool or an engineering tool?" Would you say? I would say engineering, mm -hmm. um, because it helps you pre-plan and kind of war game. Like if I want to do this, so so the three sliders that you have on there: solids removal efficiency, mud to cuttings ratio, and low gravity solids. So each one of those is dependent on other variables. So let's say in, in South Texas, Eagleford, you can get away with running um, really elevated low gravity solids. So 10, 12, 15% and still drill your well and not have any problems. Mm -hmm. If you were to pull that off in Permian, you would have directional tool failures, you would have mud pumps seizing, you would have all kinds of stuff go wrong. It's just dependent on, on the, uh, the area that you're in. So if you can move that slider and say, okay, maybe my tool is a little more tolerant than most and I can go up to maybe 10% instead of 8%, then you can see how that affects things. Right. And then on the flip side is maybe you don't have to get the cuttings as dry. Um, certain, certain areas you can just dump them in a pit and then you buy remediate. So you don't really need to remove all the oil off of them. Mm -hmm. So then you can use that and, okay, maybe I don't need the drying equipment. Maybe I just need a centrifuge to, to maintain my mud weight, stuff like that. So I would think it'd be more of an engineering tool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's what's cool about it is it's not solely about, you know, saving you money or showing you the money. It's yeah. also just talking about, like you said, showing the processes and how they all kind of mm -hmm. connect together. Exactly. That's really awesome. Well, we got a slightly different question, um, kind of shifting gears a little bit, but a couple of people in the comments are already like, Danny, what's up? Hey. So I, I wanted to mention that, you know, we talked about the beginning of the show that people might recognize you. Can you talk a little bit about, I know you're really active on social media and, and use that as a tool. Um, yeah. Like so um, I guess it started last year, the year before. So during mm -hmm. the pandemic, obviously we were all quarantined. It was very difficult for sales people. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> you couldn't go see people, like you couldn't get meetings. No one would see you because of, mm -hmm. you know, and then even like the, the, last tactic that I like to do is just go loiter in people's break rooms and just kind of hope you can <laughs> see somebody. You couldn't do that because offices were closed. So um, I took to LinkedIn, I took to cold calling, emails, mm -hmm. stuff like that, and just anything just to try to make a connection with people. Um, I had some newer accounts. So I basically, I left NOV for a little while and I came back right before shutdown. So like March 3rd of 20, I think is when I came back. So they gave me a lot of new accounts <laughs> and then the next week the world shut down. So, oh, man. so it was, it was kind of, doubly hard, I guess, if that's a word. Um, so yeah, I took to LinkedIn and was just kind of stalking people and, and <laughs> just trying to find any way. I watched a lot of podcasts. There's a lot of people that were already kind of doing it, interviewing people and, and just getting their story out because no one could see them. So I would kind of watch those and kind of see, um, just learn about people that way. Mm -hmm. And then a buddy of mine, Ephraim Garcia does a calendar. He does two calendars. He was doing midstream calendar and downstream calendar where he kind of highlights all the events for mm -hmm. uh, the industry in those spaces. He and I went to high school together. We reconnected two or three years ago in Midland at a bar, just right. randomly we're both <laughs> there you. at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> As one does. Yeah. And um, we talked about upstream calendar because that's the space that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, in January we started doing that. And I knew that the world was going to be hungry to get back out there once restrictions were lifted. So we wanted some place that they, we could have all the events in one place because I think we – we look at probably 20 different websites between like AADE, SPE, IEDC, API. Like there's so many different organizations that are doing events. Right. So we try to just bring it all in one place. And then um, every week I'll do like a weekly video on LinkedIn and YouTube, mm -hmm. just going over the events for that week. Just right. real quick. Hey, look, this is where you need to be yeah. and get out there. And, and we call it networking, networking with a purpose. Absolutely. And then uh, on the other side, we do a lot of community, um, not really outreach, but we try to support the community. So we'll, Ephraim learned videography during quarantine. 
<laughs> so he's got a drone and we have all these mm -hmm. cameras. And so he, what he'll do is go to all these nonprofit events mm -hmm. and do like a highlight video for them so they can help promote for next year or promote the, ne the next event. So right. try to help out as much as we can and just kind of connect people. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, I know if anyone watch, has watched this before and heard me mention that I'm, I'm a big fan of social media, what it can do for, for not just businesses, but and different networking opportunities. So I had to, I couldn't help when I, when I knew you were coming on and I knew some folks might recognize your face, I was excited to ask you about that and, and kind of highlight that resourcefulness that you've found through, through social media. So I think yeah, that's really and that awesome. You actually taught me a lot in our little social well. media class that we did. So, <laughs> so the shirts, I, I wear these funky shirts all the time and that's kind of my yeah. brand now and it, it's, it's helping. I've noticed it. So thank mm -hmm. you for teaching me about that. Hey, anytime, anytime. And that's, uh, I'll plug that for any NOV employees watching. If you are interested in social training, media training, reach out to me. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I think that covers all the questions we got from our audience today. And, and I really appreciate, again, taking us on sort of a virtual tour yeah. uh, of the My SCE app. And one, one more time, where can people, if they wanted to Check out the app and then also reach out to anybody. Where are those two? So the app is, is my SCE. I think it's easier if you type in Brant my SCE if you're okay. Googling it. Um, Apple Store, Google Play. Um, mm -hmm. It's free. Again, just download it. If you need any pointers, uh, I forgot to mention there's an FAQ section at the end of the app in, in one of the mm -hmm. tabs. Cool. And it goes over everything that's in the app. So if there's something that, that you don't understand in the app, maybe... Um, fluid left behind casing or some other washout factor or something like that, it tells you what you should put in there or what kind of a general number would be. Right. So that's, that's really helpful. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Danny mm -hmm. Salinas. Um, yeah. Reach out. Reach that's out. Yeah. Connect. <laughs> that's awesome. And upstream calendar. Upstream calendar.com. Mm -hmm. We have the website where all the events are. And then we do, uh, like I said, LinkedIn and YouTube where I put the videos up. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you to everybody for joining the show today. And if you have any questions about the show that you would like to ask us later, you can email us at socialmedia at NOV.com. And you can check out all past episodes on NOV.com slash live. So once again, thank you so much for joining. And we look forward to talking to you next week. Bye.